Overcoming substance abuse is an ongoing challenge for many people. Just one out of 10 who need treatment actually get it. But soon there will be another option in the Northwest suburbs. A new outpatient program is coming to Crystal. Individuals can even get an assessment to find out if they actually need treatment. Where a professional sits down with them, reviews their chemical history, and makes a judgment. You know what? You do have a problem. Oh, you don't have a problem. Oh, your problem exists, but it's not terribly severe, or it's severe, severe enough to get this level of care. Crystal's new outpatient program is currently under construction. The renovated facility will replace the Fantasia Beauty Salon on Douglas Drive. There will be two levels that can accommodate up to 60 clients at a time. The Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge will provide day and evening programming. It can treat people for a month or up to two years if necessary. The drugs are getting uh, much more powerful, they're much more destructive, they're much more addictive, and people are starting them at a younger and younger age. So you got people that are 12, 13, 14 years old that are very undeveloped in terms of their mental capacity, they're abusing these drugs, their development gets impaired or retarded, and the result of that is uh, they, they have much more difficulty functioning. So the Teen Challenge has approximately 400 clients in the Twin Cities metro area. A Golden Valley man was honored this week for saving the lives of four people. Greg Fee works for Comcast and was on the way to help a customer in Minneapolis. That's when he saw smoke billowing out of a building and people trying to escape a second story window. I thought to myself, well this guy's obviously in need because he's trying to essentially go head first out of a window on the second story. The Minneapolis Fire Department recognized Greg for his quick thinking back in July. Greg explains that after he noticed the smoke and people trying to escape, he quickly parked his truck, put out cones, and a ladder to help. Um, and then I yelled at them when we were good to go and they started to come down the ladder. At that moment, um, everyone was out. I said, okay, is everyone okay? Is, everyone okay? is anyone else in there? They said, nope. No one else is in here, everyone's safe. I said, okay, great. Um, you guys have a fantastic day. I gotta go help a customer. Greg is an amazing Comcast employee. He's been with the company nearly 15 years, and he is somebody that puts his customers first all the time. Very good uh, co-worker, great employee, and loves to do the right thing, and also a very humble man. Greg says the fire department arrived shortly after he did and blocked his truck in. It was only later that the fire department realized just how instrumental he was in getting four people out of the burning building. Where have all the birds gone? It's a fair question. There is a steady drop in bird population reported nationally. And as Eric Nelson found out, a local Three Rivers Park District wildlife expert has noticed changes too. Suburban sprawl hasn't exactly been kind to wildlife, especially those who navigate the sky. Overall, total numbers are down. Bird watchers don't have quite as much to see these days. Bird numbers have declined roughly 30% in the last 25 years. The numbers are declining. The number of ducks we get are smaller than they used to be. According to some experts, the U.S. population has shrunk to 6 billion. That's approximately 3 billion less birds than the 1970s. And it's mainly been due to habitat loss through agriculture or intensive forestry and some urbanization. Farming is the main culprit. It has chewed up habitat and drained wetlands, which is bad news for our winged friends. There is a point where they can't recover, so it is important to be aware of it and try to keep it from declining anymore. Colliding with skyscrapers, glass sports venues, windows, and other reflective objects have taken a toll. But there's another bird nemesis too. Free roaming cats have a bigger impact on bird loss than buildings. The Mississippi Flyway is like a major interstate for birds and waterfowl. The river is a natural guide as they flap their way south. However, in the Brooklands, there aren't as many flying by as there used to be. A lot of the birds using the flyway are, are migratory birds, so the numbers of birds that you see coming through are the ones that, you know, their numbers have gone down probably more than some of the resident birds. Despite the overall decline, some birds are thriving, such as Canadian geese, turkeys, and bald eagles. When I moved to the cities 25, 30 years ago, seeing a bald eagle was an event. 
you never saw them. Now there's 75 to 100 nests in the Twin Cities area. There are a few things you can do to try and stop this bird decline. You can cut back on single-use plastics, put native trees and plants in your yard, and stickers on your windows to avoid bird collisions. At Eagle Lake, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. More housing is coming to Maple Grove. The City Council recently approved a developer's agreement for the construction of a five-story apartment building. The 161-unit building will be near a future Hy-Vee grocery store south of Highway 610 and east of Maple Grove Parkway. A majority of the apartments will be one-bedroom and studio units. The complex will also feature two courtyards, a fitness center, and two large second-level outdoor plazas. As for the Hy-Vee North store, there's no timeline yet for construction. Seniors living at St. Teresa New Hope can be certain that they're in good hands. Employees at the senior living home took a pledge this past week declaring safe care for seniors. St. Teresa renewed its commitment to respect, safety, dignity, and enhancing the seniors they serve. Residents and their families were also invited to participate. So we're gathered here today as residents, as employees, as an organization, community members to take a pledge to commit to the safety for all of our residents, whether that's through care, environment, any shape or form that involves their daily life, we are here to commit to safety. Several members from the community were there to support the cause, including the mayor, police chief and the West Metro Fire Department. Champlin Park's girls soccer team is in the state tournament for the first time and they had a thriller in the quarterfinals. The Rebels faced Stillwater on a blustery night in that quarterfinal round. The Ponies appear to score late in the first half when Sophia Steble knocks the ball into the Rebels net but Stillwater's number 16 Lexi Huber is called for running into goalkeeper Malia Brady and the goal is waved off so there's no score at halftime. A scary moment in the second half when Rebels All-Metro midfielder Megan Carlson goes down hard with an apparent ankle injury. An ambulance is called and she's taken to a hospital. More on that to come. Stillwater gets on the board with just under 14 minutes to play when Huber sets up Stebley for a goal. This one counts. The Ponies lead it one to nothing. But just 14 seconds later... The Rebels have an answer. Izzy Quick's great through ball finds Paige Kala and the freshman scores, tying it up at one. There's no more scoring and the game goes to a shootout. Tied one to one in the shootout and Brady makes a big stop on CJ Fredkov and it turns out to be the only save of the shootout. Tied 4-4, four four, and it's Megan Carlson's twin sister, Lindsay, with a chance to win it for her sister and her team. And she does just that. Carlson Champlin scores. Park wins the shootout 5-4 to, to advance to the semifinals. Maple Grove's girls soccer team lost in the quarterfinal round a year ago to Minnetonka. The Crimson and Skippers were matched up again in the state quarterfinals this week. Maple Grove goalkeeper Sarah Cortez doesn't face a lot of shots, but she stops everything that comes her way, including this shot in a scoreless first half. Jumps up Second half and a great crossing pass from the Crimson's Emma Fournier to Jordan Pauley. She heads it in for a great goal. The Crimson lead 1-0 with 29 minutes left in the match. With about eight minutes to go, Maple Grove's Kelly Klons gets undercut by a defender from Minnetonka. A foul is called and the Crimson are awarded a penalty kick. And senior Abby Schulte delivers on the PK. Her goal makes it two to nothing Maple Grove and they win by that score. So the Crimson advance to the semifinals and they'll take on Champlin Park in the first class AA semi Monday morning at eight at US Bank Stadium. The teams played to a one to one tie in early September. Spots in the state cross country meet were on the line this week at section competitions. Runners in section six AA had their race on Wednesday. A dry and not too windy day at Gale Woods. Wyzetta freshman Abby Nekanicki follows up her late conference title by winning the section with a time of 18 minutes, 0.5. Hopkins seventh grader Sydney Drevlo is the runner up with a time of 18.23. Grace Weber, another Trojans freshman, takes seventh place as Wyzetta is second as a team to qualify for state after a season plagued by injury and illness. The boys are up next. 
Why is that a senior Shaiwab Hussein winning the race with a time of 1553.3? Hopkins Leo Goodman is sixth and his teammate Ben Haberman is eighth. They'll both run at state, but no local boys teams qualified in this section. The next day, runners in Section 5AA made their bids for state on a spectacular fall day. The girls get things started at the section meet in Anoka. St. Michael Albertville's Allie Weimer wins in a time of 1749.30. The Knights win the team title. Lindsay Young of Maple Grove is fifth, and Lex Davis of Osseo sixth. Emily Meyer of Totino Grace is eighth, and Jules Davis of Osseo ninth to also advance. Maple Grove is third, Osseo fourth as a team. Then the boys take the course. Moundsview dominates. Finn Sokolowski races to the win in 15.41.80. Seven seconds back is his teammate Alec Nelson with Will Sakay of the Mustangs third. Osseo's McKinnon Macoro is fourth. Connor Preston of Champlain Park fifth. And Charlie Cavan of Maple Grove sixth. And he helps the Crimson finish second. And so they advance to state as a team.